I'm Dominique Payne, second year PhD student, part of the Mammal Research Institute Whale Unit um, of the Department of Zoology and Entomology and the Molecular Ecology and Evolution Program in the Genetics Department. My current supervisors are Dr. Els Vermeulen, um, head of the Mammal Research Institute Whale well Unit, their offices are down in Hermanus, and my co-supervisor is Prof. Paulette Blumer up here at UP. So my PhD project is focused on the intro brutus whales in South Africa. So we're looking at population dynamics of this population using genomic techniques. So two main things we want to look at on a local scale is viability of the population and on a global scale is connectivity to other brutus whale populations. So when we're speaking about viability, the two main things you want to look at is effective population size and adaptive genetic diversity. So genomic techniques will be employed to estimate effective population size, which is basically the number of individuals that are reproducing in the total population, and then the adaptive genetic diversity um, of the, on a local scale to, to understand if the population will persist over time. And then on a global scale, we have collaborators that are contributing samples from other Brutus whale populations found worldwide. And we will look at how similar South Africa's population is to them or how different and if they are connected or if South Africa's population is isolated from other Brutus whale populations. So these whales are incredibly elusive and quite difficult to study. So there's a lot of gaps in knowledge in their ecology and their genetic diversity. The long read sequencing is, are, are, is incredibly useful because we get so much information out of um, just a few individuals or a single individual. So it is obviously a challenge um, sampling these whales out in the ocean, but we do get biopsy samples from free-ranging whales and how we do that is we have a biopsy dart. So the darts are not like a, a pointed dart and an arrow, it's like a hollow cylinder inside with barbs. So what it does is it it hits the whale and bounces off with a tiny piece of skin um, about 40 millimeters um, long and blubber also. So the skin we use for genetic analysis and blubber can be used for hormones and stable isotopes, other molecular work. I think the Bruce whale is the most special uh, whale <laughs> out of the three large baleen whales we get here is because it's the only resident um, baleen whale species. So it's found here year round, unlike the southern right whale, humpback whale, that migrate past South Africa during a certain time. So you could say it is the South African whale. <laughs> Diplomics and, and the team really basically taught me from scratch because I have no genomics background in bioinformatics. I did my genetics work, which is actually entirely different. So the skills that they have taught me, that is, very valuable for my whole project. Even going forward in other chapters that I will use, I'll employ the same skills, so it's, it's really valuable. I'm Paulette Blumer. I'm a professor of genetics in the Department of Biochemistry, Genetics and Microbiology. I'm also a member of the Mammal Research Institute, where I've had the privilege over the last five years to collaborate with Dr. Els Vermeulen. She is the manager of the Well Unit I'm based at Hermanus, but the Well Unit is part of the Mammal Research Institute in the Department of Zoology and Entomology. Previously in my research group, we've done population genetic work on marine fish, and that is where I realized that working with species that occur in the ocean is not straightforward. They're not that easy to observe. Fish probably a little bit more challenging than whales because at least because whales are mammals, they have to come to the surface and then the work that Alice and her team are doing comes into play where we can then observe them. But there's many parts of their lives that remain secret to us unless we can put telemetry equipment on them to follow their movements and to see what they're doing, that remains a mystery. And this is where I think genomics again comes in as a valuable tool to help us to understand elusive species. And what Dominique's work has shown is that we have this unique situation of an inshore population and an offshore population that appear to represent two different subspecies or potentially even two separate species. Having the full genome sequence available will be very valuable for Dominique for her later population genomic work that we are planning. 
where she is going to do low coverage genome sequencing of a larger number of individuals from the South African population, but also from offshore and inshore populations from other parts of the world. And in that way, we are trying to understand where does this inshore population of South Africa fit in. We believe that its conservation status will probably be elevated because of this work. Um, it is already considered as locally threatened, but understanding its relationship to other inshore populations around the globe will really help us to determine what that likely status is. What the genetic work is allowing us to do is to do genetic mark recapture, um, but that again means many years of sampling and then analyzing the individuals. What the genomic data will allow us to do is to get a, a snapshot over probably a longer term ecological timescale to tell us where the South African population fits in. And then Dominique will also be able to very accurately estimate the demographic history of the population and also estimate the effective population size. And this is very important in terms of the long-term conservation of the species. As we know from population genetic theory that you need a minimum of 500 to buffer a species against future changes. However, how we translate that into the conservation of a marine species is not straightforward because it's not like a terrestrial species where we can put fences around their distribution and we can move individuals around. In the case of the marine species, it will help us to emphasize the regions around the coast of South Africa that is very important to the future survival of these species. So by protecting their ecosystem, we can then protect them and ensure their long-term survival.